I think my lowest moment of my life was when I was doing coke with Mark. I told that much I wanted to die, but I didn't have the guts to hurt myself that I did that much coke that I'd have a fit. And what was going through your head to push you to that point? Well, I was in the papers so badly that I thought my kids are better off without me. Mm. And I actually had a fit and died. And I remember Mark trying to bring me back and I remember that it was the most beautiful feeling. I was surrounded by angels. I'll never forget it, that I tried to do it again, just get that feeling of that pure love. Wow. Mm. Yeah. I still think we should do a Netflix series of my life. <laughs> I honestly, honestly, honestly would love to do a series of a pure drama, because Steven Spielberg couldn't write this shit. <laughs> he really couldn't. <laughs> I mean, there's no drama now in my life, which is amazing, I mean. I'm... Is that how you're able to step away and sort of write your books? Doing this third book has been so fucking difficult because there's so much fear there with George as well. He scares the shit out of me, even now when he's not here. It's like proper PTSD, like when I'm, I'm, it's still so, it's only been three years, it's still so really raw. And you'll read it in the book, it was, it's so awful. That it, it scares me still. Well, the times you had to stop writing because the yeah, it was I didn't think I, didn't think, I it. did not think I was going to be able to finish it. I even said, it. I'm, "I'm, I'm also in the middle of having and being from one of the. I can't go into it. I can't go on cameras. Another anyway. So I'm having to go through that and do George, and it was it's all, and then move back up north where I was." with Mark Croft doing loads of drugs and going into bankruptcy and all the paparazzi. So I'd been triggered and I got held hostage in Wimslow what? by three masked men. What? One, I do you remember that one? It was all over the news. One had a sledgehammer, butch stuck at a carving Hold knife. on a minute, how did that, where were right. you? Where were you? Set this up. Oh, you like having children? It's great, isn't it? It's so refreshing. So it was in Wimslow. I used to live in Wimslow. And um, I was in the cinema room. And I was with Mark, and next thing you know, these three blokes walked in with balaclavas. One had a butcher's hook, one had a sledgehammer, and another one had a carving knife from my kitchen. It was in your house? Yeah, and they held us in there all night. And they marched. I mean, I, I, I actually thought, I ain't going, I had a fear of knives anyway, because my mum's fella stabbed her. And I pulled the knife out, and then he wanted to cut our tits and find it. So I, I was in, so I had this, so I'm thinking, no, no one can go through this twice in their life and survive. I'm going to die. And I think Heidi's only like five weeks old. I've got her in my arms. Oh and luckily enough, Molly and Lily was in Ireland. Uh, so it was just me, Mark and Heidi. And I'm thinking, nah. I, no one can survive this twice. That's it, I'm, I'm, I'm dead. I'm, they're gonna kill me now. Anyway, they marched Mark around the house. What were their accents like? They're from... Manchester, like, Manchester yeah, accent. Yeah. yeah. Um, they took our Rolexes. They took the cars, and then they were that fucking thick. One of them had a one. Of, I had a, a check there for fifty grand in my name to me. He went, I'll tell, I'll cash that. It's in my name, no bed. <laughs> and one of them called me Keller, and I, I got a bit balls there. And I was like Keller, and they made me take my jumper off. So I just had my bra on, so I didn't have any phones on me. And then they locked me in the downstairs, so I had a bar. A pool table in the cinema room, down the spiral stairs in the basement, and then they locked us both in the bathroom and put the pool table. Fair play to them, they gave me blankets, nappies, and formula. That's good of them. Very lovely of them, isn't it? Mm. And then they put the pool table in front of the thing so we could... And that's it, I'm in shock there. I thought they're going to burn the house down. That's it. I'm, I'm, I've literally lost it. I've literally thought, I, I, no one can go through this twice. And survive, mm. you know, and um, and I think it had something to do with Mark Croft himself. Inside job, mm. definitely. Yeah. How did you get released that point, from the room? Mark pushed the, pushed the door with the pill table. He just really pushed it open, and then we rang the police. And then I went to stay with my stepdad, and I couldn't go back to the house. And because it triggered so many memories, I ended up back in the Priory. But the newspapers like she didn't Priory on drugs. It's like I was there for therapy. Yeah. It was awful. Yeah, and I've not settled since been up north. That's why we're moving to Spain. So you, you, you're going to move from here in, over to Spain. Where else? Yeah. You don't have to say the exact location. Oh, I want to move, I want to, move to Esipona nice. in Marbella. Yeah, yeah. So we moved back up here in June. So for me, it was like 
my mum was... Because when I was down south and my mum's up here, it's great on the phone. You know, oh, Kerry, if you lived up here more, I'd be able to see you more and blah, blah, blah. And I always want my mum when I'm not well or something like that. It didn't turn out. My mum's been here once. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, so we moved, we moved to Audley Edge on Brook Lane and I was doing Panto in Oldham at my SVR. I had Heidi and DJ with me and I went to JD Sports. It was Christmas. And as I was walking out JD Sports, I looked at my SVR and I was like, why are my lights on? The brake lights on the car? Who's riding in my car? I saw it drive. I went, they're fucking still in my car. So I'm running after my car at this Realtel park. I've left Heidi and DJ screaming, crying. And then as I'm running, I'm pissing myself because I've had five kids. I thought, I'm going to fall over and put a little piss in a minute. <laughs> and then I thought, oh my God, my kids. I'm thinking, what if they try and kidnap my kids? So I've gone back and then 11 days later, they got the fob that was in my car and my address off the sat nav, came to my house, got through the electric gates and took the other car. And, it, and then that's why I moved here. It's, oh, it, um, like last night we got back from London, I was laying in bed, I'm like, what's that noise? I'm just, I've, I've got P, I'm full, I've got PTSD and my anxiety's through the roof. I mean, I went back to my doctors for it and they bought me medication, like, but I'd never go back to doing drugs or anything like that. No. That's I'm not surprised. Do you feel constantly in the threat that I'm happens? constantly on edge, yeah. And um, because of my, because I watched my car get stolen, so you see my car outside, the big green one, like if I go and park it somewhere, if I don't see my car as soon as I'm leaving, the rush of anxiety of panic that it's been stolen mm. is just awful. Have you tried yoga, meditation? I do yoga, do meditation, do it all. Yeah, of course. Has that helped? No. no. <laughs> I actually mm. want to go and do ayahuasca. Ooh. Oh, so we actually did mushrooms. We went to Marbella. I did recently. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we did just <clears throat> yeah we just did it. Me and Ryan, we went to. Um, not in a drug way, not in a trippy way. No. So we're in Marbella with the children. The kids went out for the day and we had these two professionals come over who I want to go to at Iowa. I just listened to Will Smith's autobiography. Have you heard it? No. no. Fucking brilliant. <laughs> and he's done a Hiwaska 14 times. So yeah, I'm a massive... Have you watched that Netflix, How to Change Your Mind? Yes. Fucking brilliant. I watched it back to back to back. I think I need to do that MDMA. MDMA? Me. That was is that, nice. is that what it's called? MDMA, MDMA. was my thing, ecstasy. Yeah, for the are they to, yes. Um, to, I even got in touch with the, the. I'm I'm a massive spiritual person. I believe in a higher power. I believe in visualization, manifestation. Um, I've got vision board. Think and grow rich. The secret. I'm into all that. So we went to Marbella, sent the kids out for the day, and we had Colin, Colin and Ariana come round, and they set it all up, and we took the mushrooms, and we did a. It's called breath work. Yes. <gasps> yes cried my eyes out and Ryan was crying mm -hmm. his eyes out and it was just amazing. Did it feel like a massive release? It was, uh, oh, it was just, I can't explain. It's amazing what us as humans don't realise what we can do with our own breath. Totally. Do you know what I mean? Because I believe in the fucking government. I just don't want us to have that free conscious mind. I'm a massive conspiracy theorist person. <laughs> but I believe in all that. When I watched that show, I watched it back to back. I got up at five o'clock. I watched How to Change Your Mind. I watched all four episodes. Because I'm like, yeah, I get it. And this is all from that. I'm not telling anyone we'll get drugs. Do it all professionally in that way. But I'm a massive believer in all that. I really am. Do you not think? Yes, 100%. Yeah, we got our, our YouTube channel in trouble because we interviewed David Icke. Oh my God, I love David Icke. Icke. <laughs> I love David Icke. And let me tell you who got me into all that. George. Really? See, it didn't work for him, but it worked for me. I put it all into practice. I did my letter to the universe. I had my vision board. But George expected it to land in his lap for do nothing. I'm a fucking grafter. And you just got to believe that the universe is going to happen. And you all might think I'm fucked up, but I'm telling you now. He's even saying no. He agrees. I'm telling you now, look what I've achieved. It from the age of 36, I started listening to David Icke, who I think is absolutely amazing. So much so I'd love to meet him. Please let me meet David Icke. Can we arrange that? Me and David Icke have our own. Me and David Icke should have our own TV show. It'd be fucking brilliant. <laughs> so it was actually George who got me into a hub, but it, I put it all into practice and I, Ryan's the same, and that's how we believe we met each other. Oh, then can you give <coughs> some <coughs> advice about OnlyFans? Yes. Do it. What? what? <laughs> Men! 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 Let me explain OnlyFans. Obviously, a lot of people do a lot of over-18 stuff, but that is not what it's just about. 
you could do your podcast on there, but people have to subscribe to it. Yeah. That, that's all it is. But I get my tits out. I get quicker money. It's maybe a millionaire. Do you know what I mean? I'm only using what... If I went on a beach with my kids building sandcastle, I'll have my tits out because I don't want tan marks. And the pap will get a picture and they get the money. So why should I not do it and control it? 100%. And everyone's like, oh, you're so desperate. Yeah, you're more than happy to watch Love Actually every fucking year. And there's two body doubles in it. Martin Freeman and the girl from Gavin and Stacey. Simulating sex. Naked. Why is that okay? But I get a show bit of nipple and I'm desperate. I'm doing nothing different than what Angelina Jolie's done or what Julie Roberts done. I, Natalie Portman in Black Swan is fingering herself and masturbating, simulating sex. I don't do that, but she wins awards and it's called fucking art. <laughs> <laughs> True. I, I don't get it. Do you no, know what I mean? She was saying earlier, selfies is the way forward. Uh, yeah, don't do... Love Kate, whatever. Don't all this fucking airbrushing. You go on porn up. Men like a milf. Young lads like a milf, don't they? I am a milf. I am a milf. I'm not. I, I know what to sell, and it's like you 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 know your best mate. Some thinks, oh, she's a milf. That's what that's what men fantasize about. So when you start airbrushing this shit, they don't want that because when they go on these, you know, porn sites, they're not fucking airbrushed, no. are they? See, it, it's fake and false if you do not the airbrushing. I was nervous about it. I was thinking, oh, because I've been Any shape or ages. size, it doesn't matter. Get yourself on there. Yeah. And they'll love feet pictures as well. Feet. Put, put in the comments for this video, should Jen do an OnlyFans? Yeah. We want to know. <laughs> Leaves, yeah. I'll sign up. Yeah. Oh, Why not sign up to mine? <laughs> how's, how's your feet, Jen? Are you got oh, small? I know. Oh, you're sad, 467, aren't you? Can you, can you I've got nice little feet. feet. Say, you've got dainty feet. I'm a size got, 7. I'm, I'm, a, I'm only a no, 3. No, don't oh. do that, Mr. <laughs> Moore. Don't you do get your oh, feet. I've, I've got nice little feet. I've only got so oh, tiny. tiny. I have got little feet. But yeah, for me, it's like I started off as a pay stream model. You know, a lot of it is in the messaging. You know, it is a, a full on job to be doing all the messaging. So, and there's women on there, there's men on there. It's, you know, it's an over 18 site, really. It's like a, a, an Instagram book for 18. But it's not, you could put, like rather than put this on your YouTube, you could put this on OnlyFans and charge a subscription. Exactly, you're not monetizing. Because that's what I'm going to be doing with OnlyFans. I'm planning on doing a podcast with OnlyFans about mental health, about what, that's what I want. But you subscribe to it rather than do it on YouTube. Makes sense. Makes sense. Exactly. Don't be fucking taking my idea, you. And launching Jen. It's coming to me out, you're not nicking me farts. <laughs> like, honest question, do you, do you have people do your messages for you? Because I don't no. think I could handle that. No. Like, no, I've I, enough on my Instagram no, and my I control that all myself. How oh, can you handle all those messages? I can't get through them all. It's late just nights. The ones ones it's just late nights. A lot of sat up it. A lot. A lot. It, it, it's really hard. I won't trust anybody else to do it. I really wouldn't. It's sitting up in bed late at night and early in the morning. You respond, try and respond to as many as, as possible. As many as I possibly can. If a not, late, a late at night, they better pay us because they're. Um, I tell you where I made most of my money in lockdown. Oh, I bet everyone at home. Mm. Even though, yeah, that, that's. I mean, let's have another lockdown. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> our video views went through the roof through lockdown. Your what? Our video yeah, views. Yeah, because yeah, that that's where. Right I, home, that, I mean, at first when I started doing it, I was like, oh my god, I felt sick. And then so the whole stigma around it um, of being sort of poor. But because I've but, owned it, I'm owning what I do. What I'm not doing anything different that women or actresses have done for years. I'm not fingering myself. I'm, I'm going topless and doing sexy pictures. Yet you're more than happy. You get all these high class, highbrow people who'll go watch a film, you know, and there's a sex scene in it. Oh, that's beautiful. Let's give her an Oscar. That's great art. I get my nipple out and I'm desperate. What the fuck? 